So we're using this Firebase hook on our state change to listen to when the user logs in or logs out. And then if the user logs in, we're grabbing their user details, their name, email, and user ID, storing it in our state in this user details object. And then when the user logs out, we're clearing this user details object out again. However, we don't currently have a way for the user to log out. So let's add a log out button. So currently this user is logged into the app, but we can see this login button. We only want to see that login button if the user is not logged in. So how can we know whether or not the user is logged in? Well, we can just check this user details object in the state. So if the user's logged in, then we should have a user ID property within this object here. And if the user's not logged in, then this object should be empty. So let's just jump to the layout file where this login button is. So I'm going to jump to layouts and my layout.view. And this is our login button here. And we only want to display this if the user is not logged in. So first of all, I'm going to map this state object to this my layout.view component. We could do this by using map state, which is similar to map actions. So actually while I'm here, I'm just going to get rid of this import because we're not using this open URL anymore. I'll get rid of this methods object down here. And so first of all, we want to import map state from view X. And then to map a state property to our view component, we need to do that in the computed object. So at the top of this computed object, I'll add dot 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 map state. And we're mapping from the store module. And the state property we want to map is this user details property. So I'll pass that into this array here, user details. So this user details object is now available within this view component. So back to this login button. We don't want to show this if the user's not logged in. So I'm going to add a v if directive to that. And we only want to show this if we don't have a user ID within this user details object. So we can do if not user details dot user ID. So this should only be shown now if we do have a user ID. So if I save this, then this login button should disappear. Okay, yeah, it's disappeared because this user is currently logged in. However, if the user is logged in, then we want to show a logout button. So I'm going to copy this login button. And I'm going to replace this v if directive with v else directive. So if we're not showing this, then we want to show this. And I'm going to remove the to prop from this button because we don't want to send the user to the auth page when they click it. And I'll change the label to logout. Save that. Okay, and we can now see the logout button on the page. Now it'd be good if we could see the user's name in this logout button so that it said log out Danny, for example. And we have access to the user's name thanks to this user details property from the state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this label prop and remove this self-closing tag. Just add a normal closing tag. And I'll just put log out and then a break. And then I'll output the user's name here. So we can just do that in double curly braces with user details dot name. Save that. And we can now see the user's name in this logout button. Pretty cool. Uh, but the styling is a bit off. So I'm just going to reduce the line height on this button. So I'm going to jump down to the style section. I'm going to use stylus to do this, which is the CSS language of choice for Quasar. So to use stylus, we need to add lang equals stylus to this style tag. And we want to target this button, which has the class q-button. And this is inside the q-toolbar element. So within this style tag, I'm just going to add dot q-toolbar. And then within that, I'll target the q button child and then we can add our style for that button so I'm going to set the line height 
let's try 1.2 save that okay that's looking a bit better now well this button isn't currently doing anything so let's create a new action in our store file for logging the user out so after the login user action I'll create a new action called logout user and there's a firebase method we can trigger here to log the user out so I'm going to jump back to the auth page the firebase auth api and the method we want is the sign out method so I'll click on that and to trigger this we just need to call sign out on the firebase auth api so within this logout user action I'm just going to add firebase auth dot sign out and this should sign the user out but we need to trigger this action so I'm going to save that jump back to my layout.view I'm going to map this action to this component so in this import here I'm just going to add map actions and I'll add a methods object and add our map actions method mapping from the store module and we want to map the logout user action and then we want to trigger this action when the user clicks this logout button so I'll jump to the logout button and add a click handler where we can just trigger logout user I'll save that and I'll just refresh the page okay so we're currently logged in if I click the logout button then this button should change back to the login button so I'll click that yeah and now the user is logged out and if the user logs back in in fact I'm just going to jump to the login register component and hard code in my login details just to make things a bit quicker so in this form data object I'm just going to set the email to danny at test.com and the password to 123456 okay so now if the user logs in we should see this login button change back to a logout button so I'll click login yeah we now see the logout button so it'd be good if we could redirect the user whenever they log in or log out so if they log in we want to take them to the users page at the root of our app and if they log out then we want to send them to the auth page so that someone else can log in so I'm going to jump back to the store file store.js and back in this handle off state changed action this if statement is fired if the user logs in so at the end of that I'm just going to redirect the user to the users page and we can do that using the view router which we can access within a store module by using this dot router and we want to call the push method and we can just pass in a path to send the user to so if the user logs in we just want to send them to the users page which is at the path slash and if the user logs out we want to send them to the auth page so I'll do this dot dollar router this time I'll use replace so that the user's history gets replaced and they can't go back once they've logged out and this time we'll send them to the slash auth page save that okay you can see when the app reloaded it sent us to the users page now if I click on log out it should send us to the auth page yep that's working if I log back in again it sends us back to the users page now there's another thing that we want to do whenever the user logs in or logs out and that's update their online status on Firebase here so if the user if this user logs in we want to set online to true and if this user logs out we want to set that to false so back in this handle auth state changed action if the user logs in before we redirect them I want to trigger another action an action that we've not created yet and this action will update the user's details on Firebase so we can change their online status and to trigger an action from within another action we need to use the dispatch method so we can add that to this object here along with the commit method like this so we're going to dispatch an action and I'm going to call this action firebase update user because this is going to be a generic 
function for updating any of the user's details, not just the online status. Um, we're going to pass payload into that. And what are we going to need? Well, we're going to need the user's user ID so we know which node within the user's node to write to. So we're going to need a user ID, which we have here in this user ID variable. So I'll set user ID to user ID. And we also need to send any updates we want to change. So I'll create an object called updates. And within that, we can specify any changes we want to make to the user's data here. And in this case, we just want to change the online status. So I'll just set online to true in this case. And if the user logs out, then we just want to set online to false. So I'm going to copy this dispatch method, paste it in the else statement here just before we redirect to the auth page. And this time we want to set online to false. And we don't have the user ID here inside this else statement, but we can get this from our state. So state.userdetails.userID. And to access the state within an action, we need to add state to this object up here. So I'll add that here and change this user ID to state.userdetails.userID. Save that. Now we haven't created this Firebase update user action. So I'll create that now after the handle off state changed action. So Firebase update user. And we need to pass in our payload. So we want to write to our database at this point in users and then the current users ID. So I'll set up a ref. So Firebase db.ref. We're going to write to users slash and then the users ID, which we have in this payload, which we're sending here. So users slash payload dot user ID. And then we can use the update method to update the data here. So that will basically copy the object we're sending over the top of this object here. So if any of the fields have changed, then they'll be updated here. So I'll call update and the updates we want to make are in this payload again. So in payload.updates. So I'll just put in payload.updates and I'll save that. Okay, so let's see if this is working now. I'm just going to drag my Firebase over here so we can see what's going on. And I'll log in the user and this online property should be set to true. We won't see that change because it's already set to true. But if I now log out, then we should see that change to false. Click on log out and it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I'll just jump back to my code. And in this Firebase update user action, I'll just log out the payload so we can see what's going on. Okay. Uh, the user ID is undefined in this object. Why is that? Uh, if you look at this else block where the user logs out, I'm committing this mutation, which is setting the user details back to an empty object. But then in this dispatch method, I'm trying to grab the user ID from the user details object in the state. Well, this is now empty at this point. So I think I need to move this dispatch up above that commit. So let's save that and try it again. And I'll just remove that console.log. Okay, I'll open up Firebase again, log the user in, and I'll log them out. And if we just look down here on this online property, we should see it change. Yeah, we see it change to false. Now, if the user logs back in again, we see online change to true. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done with authentication and logging in and logging out users. In the next video, when the user logs in, we're going to grab all of the real users from our database. So all these users here and display them on the users page.
make sure you click my head to subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. If you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash smackchatcode. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex, and Firebase, then check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.